The purity, so that, right. that makes sense, right? That's when the lucha were given to the, But what's fifth, what's tuba? What happened on tuba? So, when you get a list of answers this long, it means they don't really know. Right. <laughs> That's, uh, you know. But, um, there's a couple of interesting things. Um, one answer is given that uh, some of the things that happened through history. Um, it was the day that the that the Shvatim were allowed to marry one another in the early days. Shvatim meaning the tribes. The tribes. The tribes. <coughs> um, the, about the Benot Slavchad story, that it's only that generation and not all the other generations. Right. That's well, kind of what, pushing it. What, what's that? What? Right at the end of the Benot Slavchad story, right? It says that um, because the, they were given all land, the children of Zol Zol so they had to they had to marry yeah. in their tribe. Yeah, and then they were released from it eventually. Yeah, but everybody else was released. From it. Or. Uh, that the Shevet Benjamin was allowed. So they must have had some kind of tradition about something with the Shvatim coming together. Um, that they, uh, the other one was that after there was a terrible uh, sex crime in in the tribe of Benjamin. Yes. In the time of the Shvatim, and that led to a civil war, and uh, so they banned Sh Benjamin to the point where uh, their population was dying off. So then they allowed uh, them to marry. They brought them back into the community after uh, what they had done. So, the, but then the interesting thing happens here. So the, this is the one that most people accept, and I think I, I'm gonna. This is what I'm gonna fix in on. So it says that it was the day that the people in the midbar died. Stop the, the people. You know. For 40 years, everybody went into the, they, you know, the, the generation died out. Yeah. So, apparently what would happen is, they would go down to Tisha B'Av. That was the night, because that was the night that they sinned. And they would dig hole, they would dig graves, they would climb in them, and everybody over the age of 20, when they left Egypt, would die in the appropriate year. So, what happened? Um, on the last year that it happened, Apparently, they got they went into the grave, and then in the morning everybody got up again. So the next night they went back in again. They figured maybe they miscounted the day, and this went on for a week. And then at the end of the week they said, "Oh, God spared our our lives." So the last group was spared. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. And this is where uh, and this is a wonderful line of the of the Svanimal. I'd like to say this because. You won't believe what it describes here, and we'll come back to it. But um, the Svanimet in his Likutim, in the, in the stuff that's hidden in the back, he, he says an interesting thing. So let me ask you a question. So you, you're, you're, you're a smart man, you know your history. So who goes into the land of, who survives the generation of the desert? Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb, excellent. And now I just added the last year of, um, of People who should have died, they're sent to this community. And who else goes in? Uh, those who are born after the Exodus from Egypt. So who from those who left Egypt is going? The surprise answer is all of the women. All of them. Okay, keep going. That's what that's what Chazal say. The women didn't die, only the men. It says that the women loved loved the land. The women didn't sit on the show and attack Israel, but they they were very, they were very eager to. Um, maybe that's why it doesn't have a woman. They 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 were very. Um, they didn't do. There were apparently two sins, and that's the connection. So the Svetim it says, that this is the most like radical the feminist theology I've ever seen. Okay, that there were two major sins that the Jews do in the desert, right? One is the golden calf. Yeah. And if you remember the text, it says that the men grabbed the women's jewelry and contributed, but it says that, that via Parkuna, like they pulled their nose rings out of their face. As we'd say in New York. Yeah. Get out of my face. They, they pulled the nose rings out of their face. So the women did not collaborate in that sin. And, as I just described now, the women want, were very eager to go into Israel. They didn't listen to the the whining of the of the spies. They didn't pay attention, so they were very eager to go into the land. So, essentially, those the two major sins of the Jews in the desert were only the sins of the men. Yeah. 
the women were at a higher level. So, as we know, Yom Kippur has a great deal of connection to the sin of the ego. It's also the day that was, you know, that was forgiven, etc. Um, and Tuba of is the end of the sin of the Maraglim. Right? What's the Maraglim? Of the spots. Right. So those two days are the women's days. Because those are the sins that the women showed their valor. The men screw up, and the women emerge um, spotless. And we keep seeing this over and over again. Again, it's the daughters of Tzlavchad who are very eager to get their land. The B'nai God of Reuven, the men are eager, they're ready to like camp outside of the land. So, therefore, these, these moments are, are um, these holidays are the girl, other women's other women's days. They achieved a level of understanding that uh, that the men did not. Uh, These holidays, meaning Yom Kippur and Tuba Av? And Tuba Av. Are the holidays uh, for the women. And um, I think it's very interesting. Uh, I think it's a very interesting point. So, you know, one could make a... Um, I actually heard Karl Bach say stuff like this. But uh, that uh, the Torah of the Mashiach will be will be that Torah, the Torah uh, without the sin of the Egel and the Maragel, and uh, the, it'll be the the, the the Torah of the women. And you know, um, in Kabbalistic metaphors, um, that, um, repentance, chuba, is the female aspect, is bina. So that will be uh, the, the the what the you know. Rav Selig says this very exactly, but if you think about it, he says that if the Jews had not sinned in the desert, right, we would only have, he says, he quotes sources, but he said, if the Jews had not sinned in the desert, they would, Moshe would have gone into the land of Israel, and the Torah would have been only the five books of, of the Torah. There would have been all these other Torah Shabbat, all these other halachot, all the th stuff we have, we wouldn't do, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have the rest of the Tanakh. We wouldn't have it. So, the Torah that we have now, Jewish life that we have now, is to some degree, you know, if it wasn't for the Cheder Egel, there wouldn't have been a temple, it says. That's the whole thing about the, 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 the way that the Parashiot are connected. That, uh, that the temple is, is a concession by God to the sin of the golden calf. That yeah. they needed they needed a physical representation. Keep going. But that Keep going. Am I on? Am I Don't on? worry, it's on the video, so I'm just adjusting the cam. That um So everything that we know, had they listened to the women, we would have had a we would it would be a whole different world. So that Torah, that Torah uh, without the golden calf, without without the the sins, without the sin of the spies, without that, is the Torah of Tikkun. The Torah of what's the actual Mashiach. Torah? I mean, what's the actual teaching? Okay, the women didn't participate in these grand grand crimes, but what's the actual teaching? Just that the women didn't participate. And they were right, and they were rewarded by having this joyous holiday. Well, that's because they're just passive. I mean, they're just like... No, so no, no, that's not what it says. No, no, no. Look, no tzlofchad come... No, it, it's not. It says that that's why they were saved, that's why they were... Look, the Midrash says all this stuff. That the, that the women uh, were not killed in the, in the desert, like the mm -hmm. men were. That, the, you know, there, there is a... You know, that the no tzlofchad... That nashim chivvu et aretz. That the women wanted to go into the land. It also says very explicitly that the women did not sin in the ego, in the sin of the golden calf. So there is a stream of this, of this in the texts, that su suggests it. So I'm, Rav Tzadok draws this conclusion, and like I said, I've heard Karl Bach say this openly, <coughs> um, that because there's a reading of the Torah that much of what we do and what we observe and the way that Torah develop 